So the Egyptians just had a revolution, three of them in the last century. And I was talking about the United States Revolution. So we got the, the Bill of Rights in 1791. 1791, and this is, uh, um, you know, 10 years after the Articles of Confederation, 10 years after the, the military operations had ceased in 1781. Uh, and in fact, if it wasn't for Patrick Henry, who was vital to create the debate for the revolution, I'm going to pay taxes, but who do I pay taxes to? You, the U.S. government or the British government? So because of that um, a, a big lawsuit, I forget the name of it, but Patrick Henry had a lawsuit which spearheaded the debate for the revolution. He was vital. And then afterwards, he had to fight the Federalists to make sure that there was even... Uh, a uh, Bill of Rights was even included in this new government, which was supposed to safeguard freedoms. It took them, it took them a while, but eventually they did put some Bill of Rights in there. And many uh, people today ignore them. In fact, I don't. There's no government uh, agency that enforces the Bill of Rights. The police are supposed to enforce the law, but the the Bill of Rights is a law that they they tend to forget. Okay, so you had, uh, we had a revolution in America 250 years ago, and um, Egypt in the last 100 years has had three. <clears throat> so what the Bill of Rights it did, or what the Bill of Rights did for the uh, United States it, it contained many natural rights, human rights, that were influential in justifying the revolution. And so they attempted to balance a strong national government with relatively broad personal liberties. Thomas Jefferson said that a revolution in America every 20 years would be good. Every 20 years. 1776. We haven't had a revolution for 76. So what? That's, that's 12... 12 plus 24, 36, so 236 years. We haven't had a revolution in 230, 36 years. So every 20 years, that means we should have already had 12 revolutions by now. So far, we've had zero. If we were to listen to Thomas Jefferson, we would have already, Americans would have had 12 revolutions. Instead, we've only had, we've only had the one and zero after that. Thomas Jefferson also uh, pointed out what the difference between freedom, uh, democracy and freedom versus tyranny is. Uh, when the people are afraid of the government, when we're afraid of the government, that's tyranny. Oh, I hope the government doesn't hurt us. I hope they don't, they don't do anything to us. But when the, the government is afraid of the people, then that's freedom and democracy. And that's, that's what uh, Egypt has going on right now. So whereas the Muslim Brotherhood candidate, I want to say Morsni, Morsi, Morsni, Morsi, he will have to use that popular control in order to give him some, some negotiating power. So the military say, no, we want all the power. They're like, well, if you don't give us what we want, then I'm going to call the people back out on the streets and you're, we're going to get whatever the hell we want to get. Are you going to just gun down and kill everybody? You know, it's not, Egypt's not like Syria. They're, they're, uh, I just, I wouldn't see them doing that. I don't think there'd be a huge bloodbath if all the people are getting out of their chairs. Then, just like in, in uh, the Russian Revolution, during the, um, I guess, the first one, October Revolution, 17, 1917, uh, the, the troops couldn't shoot the people because that's their brothers and sisters and their mother and father. That's their family. The, the troops recognize themselves as the people, which is absolute key. Chris Hedges says that's when you know the revolution has won. Uh, like Shamar Thomas, that Marine in New York that says, you know, what are you doing? This is America. What's going on? And then eventually the police chief told them all to go away because he is us and we are them. So... Yeah. So when the, the government's afraid of the people, when uh, uh, the security forces, when the government is afraid of people, that's when we get freedom. That's when we get democracy. So by these standards, America is tyrannical. We live in a police state. Um, Mayor Fisher laughs at the people. He is not afraid of us. He could give a fuck less what we want. He's the king of the Louisville police city state. 
and it's the fastest hierarchical state. Aristotle said that revolutions happen by toppling the leadership in power or by new constitutions. So, whereas America has had only one revolution and some revolutionary fervor in the 1960s, um, Kentucky has had uh, uh, has rewritten their constitutions, which is a pseudo revolution, right? According to Arista, Aristotle, so Aristotelian. Uh, concepts. So America's never rewrote the Constitution, but Kentucky has three times. Kentucky's Constitution was first adopted in 1792. 1792, and then it was rewritten three times, and has been amended a, a whole bunch more. The latter versions were adopted in 1799, 1850, and 1891. The 1891 Constitution, which is still in effect today, is the Constitution that Kentucky uh, the, the lawyers in Kentucky and the court system uses today was written in part by the first New Dealer in America, a German-American Kentuckian, William Justice Goebel, who was assassinated in 1900. So America overall, compared to Egypt, has had one revolution, which ended in 1781. Kentucky's had three pseudo-revolutions, with the last one that happened in 1891. So in the last century, America, Kentucky, zero. In the last century for Egypt, they've had three revolutions. It's a big night tonight for Egypt. They've won their freedom. It's a new chapter in, e in Egypt's history. So, viva la revolution, Egypt. Hopefully, your example inspires us Americans to actually embrace our position in the world uh, by being in the belly of the beast and and standing up to the oppressors all right peace america